this uh, move up in oil prices. The macro, I would still say, is a little bit uncertain. It's not like all flashing green lights, uh, but fundamentals have turned. We're seeing very, very steep stock draws, uh, particularly on the product side, and you've seen that effect on pump prices in the U.S. Uh, gasoline prices have been edging higher, and we still think the overall system is pretty precarious given how low inventories are. So we could, well, we are expecting to see prices, at least gasoline prices, staying higher at the pump for a while. You know, and, and like you said, this would hardly surprise energy analysts who for a while have been saying just simple supply and demand would point to higher prices. Do you agree with those who said the weakness in the first six months of the year was a lot of destocking, uh, inventory liquidation, maybe obviously a little bit of the China factor as well? I mean, why, why were we so uh, tame for so long? Yeah, I think that was probably one of the things we, it was, you know, we kind of were the, one of the first to talk about the destocking uh, theories, and, and we've put out a lot of pieces around that. Um, and I'll give you a great example. Cushing in the U.S., which is where WTI is priced off, um, we've actually seen uh, WTI or Cushing inventories draw by over 8 million barrels in July, even though the market was in contango. And that shows you that even a shallow contango, which in the past would have been an incentive to store oil, wasn't enough because of the higher cost of capital. People were actually destocking crude. So I think this is happening everywhere. We've seen this across products as well. Um, and I think that that has been a big reason why we haven't uh, or we hadn't moved up in the first six months of the year. But ultimately, destocking is finite, right? There is only that much inventories people have. Um, and we are pretty much running through or we've run through most of that right now. Uh, so, yeah, we should expect to see prices kind of remaining supported. To me, that is fascinating. I want to make sure that people caught what you just said. Higher interest rates could potentially result in higher oil prices. Because right now, even though the futures price is higher than where we are, it's more expensive to store it because of the cost of capital. So people, instead of storing crude and kind of saying, great, I'll take advantage of the longer prices, saying, well, I can't afford to because the cost of capital is too high. So they're destocking. And now where are we with inventory levels, broadly speaking? I mean... Is this sustainable? And if, if we have to both kind of support demand and restock, what does that imply? I think that's a great question. I think that is where the real conundrum is because it's too expensive to store. And that's why if you look at gasoline and diesel, for instance, inventories just haven't built, if anything, they've drawn, which is why what we've seen is any time there's a refinery fire or refinery outage, you have these massive moves higher in gasoline and diesel prices. Crude, because of the Strategic Petroleum Reserve release we saw throughout last year and a little bit this year as well, there is more of a buffer. We still have somewhat of an access to run down, which we are running down very quickly. By the end of this year, we do think we would have run that down. So there's still a little bit of time, which does expose us to higher prices for next year. Wow. Amrita, uh, in terms of the uh, gasoline production, I know you've done some work about refinery volumes and what the, uh, the sort of extreme heat in parts of this country have meant for that. And how is that driving prices, if at all? It's been the refining system as a whole, right? It's been really precarious. It's interesting because this year we have had a bunch of new starts in the Middle East, or they were supposed to start. Of course, they were delayed again. Uh, but some of them are up and running. But we haven't seen the rest of the world really operate fully, U.S. in particular, but even heat in Europe, um, even in Japan and Asia as a whole. We've just seen so many unplanned outages, particularly with the heat. Uh, refineries have had to constrain their operating rates in Europe, for instance. But also there's been a real crude diet issue. A lot more light crude is coming out, mainly from the U.S. And in the summer, it gets really problematic for refineries to process that, especially in this heat, because you get a lot more naphtha, which, again, without getting too technical, has been very, very weak because of the China property market. So there's been some real headaches for refiners, and that's exactly why pump prices have just been so stubbornly high and have been rising uh, because we just haven't been able to produce enough gasoline. Where do, so I, I was asking, I think it was Bob McNally uh, last week, I said, when do you think we're, you know, are we going over $4? He said, absolutely, it's just a matter of time uh, in terms of the national average. What, what would you say about that? 
Yeah, I do think, I mean, look, the, the good news for consumers is that we are going towards the winter specification, which is obviously less stringent. Um, so obviously summer prices for in the, in the U.S. for gasoline always tend to be higher. So that's the silver lining uh, for consumers. But in general, yes, I do agree, we are definitely headed towards higher gasoline prices, at least in the next few weeks, uh, because not only is crude rising, but outright gasoline inventories are still low and demand is still okay. All right, M. Rita, thanks so much. It's good to check in with you this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you. All right, coming up.